so interaction what is that interaction of electromagnetic radiation not light with matter we call it as spectra or spectroscopy okay based on these interaction of light with matter we determine various you know properties of materials okay so we have different spectroscopy what is uh, electromagnetic spectrum it starts from gamma rays x rays vacuum ultraviolet ultraviolet infrared uh, visible infrared millimeter waves microwaves millimeter waves and radio waves okay it's an entire electromagnetic spectrum okay in this we study uh, basically right for your syllabus we have uv visible spectroscopy and infrared spectroscopy usually we use these two for characterization of nanoparticles okay well so there are other spectroscopic uh, techniques microwave is there microwave spectroscopy okay um well so usually we call this uv visible spectroscopy as electronic spectroscopy and infrared spectroscopy as rotational vibrational spectroscopy and microwave spectroscopy is only rotational spectroscopy okay among the three okay 1 2 and 3 among the three which is having higher energy yes can you hear me can you hear me am i audible yes sir. yes sir okay among the three spectroscopic techniques uv visible infrared and microwave spectroscopy which is having higher energy and which is having lower energy anyone uv visible uv visible higher energy sir ha very good 200 to 400 nanometers okay it has got higher energy okay and 400 to 800 700 i can say uv and visible together okay and infrared 750 700 onwards okay then microwave okay right 1000 10000 or something nanometers okay very high uh, wavelength so lower energy okay so now you know u visible has got higher energy and micro has lower energy right imagine um, a hefty pile one okay imagine a hefty pile one okay and a weak pile one okay very weak pile one okay 
so right a powerful pelvan and one one guy is a very lean guy and so imagine um, one sand you know bags you know, boxers they play with the sand bags they hit the sand bags okay very weak pelvan very uh, uh, he doesn't have much energy so what if he punches it what happens the the that whatever the sand bag will not move it may rotate at the max okay whatever the energy has if he punches the sand bag the sand bag may rotate okay another little bit hefty compared to this guy okay pelvan comes okay and he punches it now hand bag can vibrate and rotate that's it he has got that much energy only now comes a very powerful pelvan okay punches it the bag not only vibrates moves this side okay if he punches it okay the sand inside will come out sand inside will come out he has got more energy okay similarly here i can write right in the uv visible is like hefty pile one if he punches it electrons come out electrons come out that's why it's called electronic spectroscopy uv visible light has got it's a powerful light it can excite electrons okay it's like hefty pile one if he punches it the sand from the bag comes out okay so powerful infrared spectroscopy right it has got lower energy compared to the visible it can rotate and vibrate the molecules it can vibrate and rotate the molecules so it's called rotational vibration spectroscopy microwave okay at home you use for heating okay because of rotational energy it can provide rotational energy so because of that rotational energy the the water heats up there right at home you have microwave ovens ovens so it, it it doesn't have that much of energy it can rotate the molecules okay based on the energy we classify them as electronic spectroscopy rotational vibration and rotational spectroscopy uv visible spectroscopy is called electronic spectroscopy infrared spectroscopy is called rotational vibration spectroscopy and microwave as rotational spectroscopy okay i'll discuss in brief about what is infrared spectroscopy infrared spectroscopy it is basically rotational vibration spectroscopy or simply say the vibration spectroscopy that deals with the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum that is light with a longer wavelength and lower frequency than the visible light okay for a given sample which may be a solid liquid or gaseous we are talking about solid samples because it's all we are talking about infrared light so vibrational means we are talking about nanoparticles okay <coughs> the basic ir spectrum is essentially a graph of infrared light <coughs> infrared spectroscopy uses an instrument called an infrared spectrometer the spectrophotometer or it's also known as spectrophotometer to produce infrared spectrum okay the basic infrared spectrum is essentially a graph of infrared light absorbance on the vertical scale and frequency on the frequency or wave number usually we use on the horizontal scale okay typical units of frequency used in ir spectra are reciprocal centimeters sometimes called 
wave numbers with symbol per centimeter. Okay. <coughs> so the infrared region, whatever we are talking about infrared region, is near in near infrared, mid infrared, and far infrared. Near means near to visible range. Okay. So point eight. micrometer or it's also known as 800 nanometer to 2500 nanometer we call it as near infrared okay in this range 2.5 micrometer okay we call this uh range as near infrared range okay mid infrared means uh it is 2.5 to 25 micrometer or so in terms of uh, nanometer it is 2500 sorry uh right nanometer nanometer to 25000 nanometer okay this range is called mid infrared okay i think electronic students they know that optical communication they use near infrared light okay what do you use fiber optics which light is and near infrared light something 1500 nanometers light is only used for optical communications okay fiber optic communications right where there is a least, uh, very least interaction of light with matter that's the reason it's used 1500 around 1500 nanometers okay far infrared is 25 micron to 1000 micrometer we usually express in terms of centimeter inverse per centimeter we say is called wave number this is wave number okay so for stars and other analysis they use far infrared okay for uh, mid infrared we talk we talk about uh, fingerprint and uh, fingerprint region okay fingerprint region means it is in mid infrared range 1000 per centimeter to 1500 per centimeter this range okay we call it as fingerprint region no two molecules will have the same vibrational frequency okay they show different spectra in this range that's why it's called fingerprint region okay it is used in your mostly uh, right forensic laboratories they use fingerprint region so right to, uh, right so what for for what reason the incident happened or something you want to analyze okay the say they analyze the sample in this range only if you want to go for you know mm, <coughs> functional groups whether it is alcohol alcohol or aldehyde or which molecule it is or acid okay whether it contains carbon 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 bond is there carbon oxygen co bond is there or co double bond o this kind of structure is there so for all these things we use 1500 per centimeter to 4000 per centimeter range this is called functional group region okay so below 1000 we get right uh, for materials like tio2 how to tell that it is tio2 or how to tell it is zinc oxide 
so we see what zn o frequency vibration frequency of zinc oxide okay if it is water is there h2o okay so it interacts with this oxygen and forms a broad band at 3600 cm okay because of oh stretching okay so these have got different vibrational frequency for example you might have heard about greenhouse gases what are greenhouse gases anyone greenhouse gases carbon dioxide methane water they are called greenhouse gases why they are called greenhouse gases they increase the temperature of the atmosphere okay they increase the temperature of the atmosphere how they increase the temperature of atmosphere for example carbon dioxide is there in the atmosphere okay carbon dioxide can vibrate how how it can vibrate it can vibrate okay like this okay see this bond may stretch and this may okay now this is the same see this may stretch a symmetric stretching we say okay this is vibrating right so imagine these bonds are like springs okay o is going far away and this o is coming this way okay this is called a symmetric stretching symmetric stretching means like the c double bond o very both are close okay another c double bond o long bonds okay so stretching they are stretch when you release you get this when you stretch like this it is symmetric stretching and ir spectrum will not show the symmetric stretching it requires a dipole moment okay so all these things are not required as such for your uh, this one uh, right study but i have to give some information okay for your syllabus what we have is what is the instrument we use here okay we use infrared source okay one interferometer we use to make it monochromatic light okay so do you know how we can make a light monochromatic simple you take a prism when white light passes through a prism what happens red light comes here violet light is more most diffracted uh, means uh, scattered one okay so it's called dispersed one okay violet indigo green, blue green yellow orange red you know that with your spectra so you have got different colors right so i want to collect only the green light so what i should do i should use a a small pin hole okay okay and i'll collect only this light which is green light i'm using a slit to collect the green light okay the rest of the light is reflected okay only green light trans is transmitted so what i'll get i'll get what monochromatic light you can use simple prism to make the light monochromatic if i move the slit to here 
I can collect red light. Okay, I can collect orange light. Okay, whichever the light I want to pass through this spectrometer, okay, I collect that light only. Okay, otherwise we have another setup. Okay, IR source. We use Michelson's interferometer. Okay, interference of light, diffraction of light. You are studying based on that. Okay, we get different frequency. Right, we can choose. We can tune the frequency, that wavelength of the radiation. So we pick one particular wavelength light here, and using a beam splitter, okay, which which can split the light into two beams of same energy. Okay. Then use uh, lenses. Uh, sorry, uh, mirrors. Okay, so they are all metallic mirrors. Okay, usually made up of gold or silver or whatever it is. So we pass this light, infrared light of particular wavelength through the reference cell, where we keep the sample, reference sample. So which will not absorb the infrared light. And another one, another beam, we pass it through the sample, which absorbs the light. Okay, and both the beams are sent to the detector. Okay, right, using a beam splitter. What splitter? You, what it does is once it allows this light, and then it allows this light. So detector sees both the lights. Okay, and takes the difference of it. Okay, this is signal. This minus. The reference gives you actual signal. That signal is processed analog to digital conversion A to D. Okay, analog to digital conversion is done, and then it is sent to a display. Okay, so where you get the spectra? Spectra will be like this. Either we use percentage transmittance, how much light is transmitted, transmitted versus wave number. Wave number. Is in per centimeter. Okay, so what we do is 400 per centimeter to 4000 per centimeter. Okay, so the spectra will be like this, something like this. So just choose these peaks. Where are the peaks? And analyze the peaks. Okay, why it is? uh this peak is because of which uh which uh, right uh, function group or something okay so i i mentioned about greenhouse gases you didn't answer me my question anyway i'll just uh, give you information about greenhouse gases greenhouse gases okay what are greenhouse gases which have got absorption band in the infrared region what are they for example h uh, h2o absorbs 3600 per centimeter wave number which is in infrared range carbon dioxide absorbs in uh, right 2349 per centimeter so which is in infrared range okay what happens actually this is earth okay right this is earth sunlight Falls like this, and it which heats up the earth surface, and the heated thermal radiations they go to the they are reflected to the space. But what happens when the sunlight heats up the earth surface, and the thermal radiations are moving towards the space? In that during that, what happens? These H two O Or CO two, if they are present, okay, they absorb this radiation and they start vibrating. They start vibrating. They absorb this radiation and they start vibrating. I think you might have observed if it is a, a cloudy day, okay, very cloudy day, okay, where humidity is more in the environment, you feel very warm, right? Why you feel very warm? Because the resonance frequency of H two O 
is in the thermal range that is infrared range so it absorbs all the thermal radiation it traps all the thermal radiation on the troposphere itself on the earth surface okay so what happens so it heats up the surface so we we feel warm these uh, greenhouse gases should be there in the environment otherwise the average average earth temperature average temperature of earth would be minus 15 degrees celsius because carbon dioxide is there in the environment because water is there in the environment so the temperature of earth is average temperature is plus 15 degrees celsius you got it so they have got absorption bands in that range okay so whatever the molecule which has got absorption band in the infrared range you can use this spectroscopic technique to detect the that material okay for example tio2 is there it should show some peak somewhere in 400 to 450 nanometers in this range so then we say it is because of tio2 right so like this okay so what we do is a beam of infrared light is produced passed through an interferometer then split into two separate beams okay one is passed through the sample other passed through the reference as i mentioned already the beams are both reflected back towards the detector however first they pass through a splitter which quickly alternates which of the two beams enters the detectors detector the two signals are then compared and print out is obtained ir source is usually made up of nurse drawers okay tungsten filament lamp mercury lamp carbon dioxide lasers can be used okay so these are basically used to detectors used are thermocouples bolometer pyroelectric photoconducting materials okay and reflection gratings are made from various plastics okay and two or more gratings are often used with several filters to scan wide range of uh, mirrors used to focus the collimated infrared light okay mirrors are generally made up of pyrex or another material of low coefficient of thermal expansion sun surface is coated with usually we coat it with metals mirrors are usually coated with metals high reflective coatings okay so you will use spectrum it is similar to the ir spectrum okay spectroscopy here you use uh, spectroscopy the wavelength is different okay so here the absorption and the reflectance of the visible range directly affects the perceived color of the chemicals involved it is based on beer lambert's law what is this beer lambert's law i think you have studied in the first year itself okay the law states when a monochromatic light monochromatic light passes through an absorbing solution a solution which absorbs light or a material which absorbs light amount of light absorbed okay the amount of light absorbed by the solution is directly proportional to the concentration as well as the path length what it tells absorbance how much light is absorbed by the sample is proportional to what path length path length t thickness and concentration okay for example if i take one film okay and i want to see the sun okay i i want to see the solar eclipse okay with one uh, x ray you know uh, film okay so it i may damage my eyes i'll fold it in two i'll make it thicker more the thicker i make it less light is is allowed to travel through the that uh, film okay films okay whatever the light i am receiving is less so as thickness increases as thickness increases what happens absorbance also increases so transmittance definitely decreases if you increase the concentration okay if you make it more colored so again absorbance increases okay so it is also given by epsilon is molar absorptivity or extinction coefficient okay it's a constant is that's a, into thickness into concentration this is known as beer lambert's law from this you can tell okay 
what is the material present okay and how much it is absorbing and what is its epsilon value okay epsilon value is different for different samples okay all right when you plot a graph of absorbance versus concentration it should be a, a straight line right y is equal to mx plus c c is zero here what is m epsilon into t both are constants thickness is constant concentration is varying so whatever if you take the slope you get epsilon into t okay so this is about uv visible spectroscopy okay i'll discuss uh, in detail about uv visible spectroscopy in the next class before that i'll just uh, go to the the one which i missed here okay scanning electron microscopy okay we already discussed uh, transmission electron microscopy and it is similar to transmission electron microscopy okay scanning electron microscopy yeah, you what you have studied in uh, tem transmission electron microscopy what are what all you have studied in tem in tem we have studied we require one electron gun electron source then we require electromagnetic lenses then we require what then photographic plate all those things okay it's one of the indispensable tools for characterizing materials from nanometer scale to micrometer scale okay it is called scanning electron microscope okay it is graded as versatile equipment for microstructural morphology okay surface how it surface looks like morphology means how the surface is uh right microstructure on the surface okay analysis as well as to study the chemical composition okay during sem the surface structure is reflected actually what is uh, the surface that is reflected of course it it should be conducting here because you are firing electrons here it it makes use of narrow beam of electrons with great depth and they obtain obtain a characteristic three dimensional appearance at low magnification sem is able to obtain huge amount of sample at a time okay right uh, it is one of the widely used equipments basically sem is preferred for particle size analysis due to its resolution of 10 nanometers okay advanced versions now we have advanced versions about which have resolutions up to 2.5 micro nanometers means the particle is here another particle is here okay the distance between the two particles is 2.5 nanometers still i can see these two are separated okay means it, i can resolve these two okay if you have low resolution they look one okay so it can resolve up to 2.5 nanometers the feature of this instrument is that it can also be used in conjunction with other equipments like edx or eds okay both all mean the same energy dispersive x ray okay what it uses you see this is an atom okay for example i'm drawing this is nucleus of an atom this first orbit second orbit okay third orbit like this okay it's an atom okay electrons are here which are revolving around the nucleus right when okay electron is sitting there okay i'll just draw electrons with red ink so that you can understand the electrons electron is here electron is sitting here one more electron is here okay external electron comes here okay when x rays 
okay when electron when you use electron gun the and electron comes and strikes this what happens this electron may sit here and the electron which is present here it may come out okay so this electron okay i'll draw with different things so that you can understand this okay this electron comes and hits here and replaces this electron and this electron right this electron of the orbit comes out okay so this electron we call it as secondary electron what happens sometimes this another electron okay travels like this but it doesn't hit the this electron it is repelled by this electron and goes away like this we call this as the same electron is traveling okay it is called primary electron okay electron it is also known as back scattered electron okay or another electron trapped right coming from the you know the source and hits this electron okay and sits here okay and electron from here comes out okay and what happens because of this process this electron okay it has removed this electron right and what happens uh, it can remove right this electron also it hits and goes out okay the vacancy is created so this electron here it comes back it right, jumps here while jumping it radiates certain frequencies we call it as x rays these electrons okay this light energy we call it as x rays so what is the velocity of this electron kinetic energy of this electron if you know if you know the wavelength of this x ray you can tell what is the material okay three things you can observe here one back scattered electron primary electron only back scattered another one secondary electron okay right so when it hits it gives secondary electron okay so right this primary electron sits here and secondary electron comes out comes out third case is this electron hits and it is also it is also scattered but it removes this electron from this this one and electron from the higher energy level comes out here right when it goes here it radiates light in the form of x ray and this is characteristic x ray so for example if copper uh, is present metal is uh, copper k alpha radiation okay it is giving k alpha radiation so it gives characteristic wavelength of 0.154 Nanometer, one five four nanometer. So if you are seeing one point point one five four nanometer, it is copper. So it's called edax. Okay. So this sum, okay. So acceleration of electron beam is done through high voltage system. Okay. Usually we use twenty kV. Okay. Just below the sample, we keep this much voltage, so that electron is attracted towards the what was uh, right first terminal and that right so i'll just uh, go through this one and come back again okay so electron is traveling okay first we use uh, electromagnetic lenses okay these are not optical lenses they are all electromagnetic lenses so electron okay is made to travel here okay and then so we we apply very high positive voltage here and very high negative voltage here negative voltage okay and here it is positive voltage the potential difference is 20 kv okay 20000 okay so electron travels here it hits the surface okay of the sample which is coated with silver or gold or something 
and what happens you get scattered electrons what are the scattered electrons it may be back scattered electron it may be secondary electrons or it may be what x rays so you observe this secondary electrons or back scattered electron you can use one more uh, right detector to study the back scattered electron that scans okay we keep this uh, right um detector here so right from the right, back scattered electrons we create an image so the particles are like this okay so you get the image okay of the sample okay or we can use one x ray tube so you can just uh, uh, x ray detector so you can just measure the wavelength of the x ray and from that you can say energy dispersive x ray spectroscopy eds or edax okay from that we can tell it is an elemental analysis what are the elements present elemental analysis okay so you can create an image with secondary electron or primary electron black scattered electrons and also you get the information about what are the elements present with electron scanning electron microscope okay so acceleration of electron beam is done through high voltage system okay and electrons electron beam gets narrowed using passing through the electromagnetic lenses and apertures the generated beam scans the surface of using scan coils the signals then generate images the higher magnification levels so we can get magnification One lakh times. Okay, whatever you use binocular and all, pi x, ten x, maybe, right? Maybe in your mobile you might have seen. Okay, how much you can zoom? Okay, so this electron microscope can be zoomed up to one lakh times. Okay, to get the better surface topographic analysis with the best spatial resolutions. However, the concerns of related that the use of equipment need to be you require very high vacuum it's similar to tem you require very high vacuum otherwise electrons will be scattered everywhere okay and samples should be conducting okay presence of surfactant or some this one uh, right causes some flashing coating on the particle surface okay right uh what are the benefits it shows surface structures provides three dimensional topographic image with versatile information instrument works fast most sem require minimal preparation uh, right actions modern sem allow generation of data even in digital form limitations the equipment is very expensive it occupy, occupies large floor space you require a big hall or big room for this okay uh maybe right nowadays portable are also there but still we use you know you require very high vacuum pumps and all so still you could require uh, at least 10 by 20 space the operators need special training to perform the analysis preparation of samples can result in artifacts sometimes you know if your preparation is not good some other right something is not there but you can right you can see in the sem image okay if the preparation is not good small risk of radiation exposure is also said with the electrons because you are using electron gun so that's a there is a risk of right radiation 